Sue Markey, respecting the Hamilton Just Recovery Initiative. Sue, are you with us? I am, yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I yes. can, and I can see you very well. Okay. And I do want to share an image. So, let's see. Can you see the image? Not yet. Oh, okay. Um, let's see. I'm not sure how I'm going to. I'll, uh, I'll ask. Um, I'll ask Elsie Pepperella. Perhaps she can help us be with some assistance to you. Hi, Sue. I, if I minimize, can you see now? No, Sue. So you have to share your screen. So you have to have it on, on full on your screen. But what you'll have to do is on, on your WebEx screen at the bottom, there will be a button that says share. Oh, at the bottom, think, yes. Yeah. So if you click on that, it will allow you to share your screen. Uh, okay, got it. Can you see now? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So okay. there you go. Okay. Um, so uh, thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor and Councillors, for allowing me to present today. My name is Sue Markey and I live in Ward 3. Since 2015, I've been a member of Hamilton 350, which opposes the building of any new fossil fuel pipelines, organises campaigns and actions, educates about the climate crisis and supports the Just Recovery Hamilton Coalition's initiative in response to the impacts of COVID-19. I will provide a brief overview of the six principles for a just recovery and relate these to the Hamilton Just Recovery Coalition's report. The six principles for a just recovery was released in June 2020 and adapted from international principles for a just recovery. Over 150 civil society groups, including Council of Canadians, Climate Action Network, the Canadian Labour Congress, Indigenous Climate Action, and the Canadian Health Coalition are united in pushing for a just recovery. Millions of Canadians collaborated and created these principles. The purpose is to demand that government plans address inequities in Canadian communities by building a more equitable and sustainable future. The first one, put people's health and well-being first, no exceptions. Health is a human right and is interdependent with the health and well-being of ecological systems. Secondly, Strengthen the social safety net and provide relief directly to people, particularly those who are structurally oppressed by existing systems, such as Black, Indigenous and people of colour. Third, prioritise the needs of workers and communities. Support must be distributed that is consistent with Indigenous sovereignty, a climate resilient economy and workers' rights. Fourth, build resilience to prevent future crisis. We cannot recover from the current situation by entrenching systems that will cause the next crisis. Fifth, build solidarity and equity across communities, generations and borders. In a globalized world, what happens to one of us matters to all of us. And sixth, uphold indigenous rights and work in partnership with indigenous peoples. A just recovery must uphold Indigenous rights and include the full and effective participation of Indigenous peoples in line with the standard of free, prior and informed consent. Cities and provinces where citizens are pushing for a just recovery include Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver, Newfoundland, Northwest Territories and Simcoe, Ontario. Inequities in Hamilton have existed for Indigenous and Black people, people of colour, people with disabilities, Two-Spirit, LGBTQQ1A plus communities, women and recent immigrants for far too long. In a 2006 Hamilton Spectator article, Statistics compiled by the Social Planning Research Council found that citywide poverty averaged about 20% of the population, but was much higher for certain groups. 50% for recent immigrants, 37% for Indigenous people, 
and 34% for black people and people of color. The 2010 Code Red Hamilton Spectator series, in collaboration with McMaster University, revealed incredible disparities in social, economic, and health indicators based on where people live. One startling finding was the 21-year difference in life expectancy between a northeast area of Hamilton and Glanbrook. The 10-year Code Red update in 2000. 2019 found little has changed. COVID-19 has exacerbated the existing inequities in Hamilton due to job losses, increased food insecurity, transportation barriers for people with disabilities and the elderly, increased stress for frontline and essential workers, and the heightened risk of eviction. The Just Recovery Hamilton Report provides a positive, hopeful alternative vision to address inequities and COVID-19 impacts. It's, it also shows a way forward that will help Hamilton become more sustainable by improving citizens' health and well-being, addressing the climate crisis, and supporting an equitable community. I urge the City of Hamilton to implement the report's demands in collaboration with the Just Recovery Hamilton Coalition. Thank you. Thank you, Susie. If I could ask you to take down your presentation. Okay, and... Hi, Sue, so it's Stephanie. Oh, I think you found it. There you go, thank you. Okay. So, Sue, right now I'll turn to members of council to see if they have any questions of, of your presentation. Members? I don't see any, Sue. Thank you very much uh, for taking the time to be with us this afternoon and sharing your insights.